so it's an extreme grueling exercise. They are all they hate it. They hate it. <laughs> I have to credit this to my boss. He was okay. the one who came up with this. Okay, yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, we're gonna steal that idea. <laughs> to Honey Never Sleeps, where we talk about sales, business, and marketing in general. Um, today, we're going to talk about creating content that drives sales. And um, I welcome Serene to Honey Never Sleeps. Please introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Serene from Respond.io. We are a business messaging company. Uh, we, help to, we help SMEs and enterprises um, consolidate all the communications onto one channel. Uh, we are a B2B SaaS company, and my job um, as a head of content at Respond.io is to create all this content, uh, plan what we want to say to our customers, uh, and then we publish them. That's the gist of what I do, but that's a lot for which we'll cover um, in this podcast. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, Serene, um, yeah. Obviously, before we decided to meet, we were kind of looking at your background and I yeah. see that um, before you got into marketing and, and you know content creation, um, you were teaching for four years. Um, why the switch? Why that shift? Why that shift? Right. I've been teaching for four years before this. Um, and then I found that as much as I love the kids, as much as I love the classroom, but it's not something that I actually want to do for the rest of my life. Yeah, I know I can write, and writing is something that I have, my, that I have passion for, uh, for as well. Mm -hmm. So I went into advertising, and that got me exposed to social media, mm -hmm. um, content creation as well. And then I moved on to my next job, which is a, a startup. Mm -hmm. It's an insure tech company, which is also, I would say, um, not really B2B, it's B2C. But mm -hmm. it's, it's also a tech company, and that's where I really found out about content marketing. Mm -hmm. um, because I was required to write blogs mm -hmm. on compliance, I was required to write blogs on insurance, um, things like that. And that really kind of sparked this interest in content for me, because the whole idea of content marketing is basically to educate someone, right? Mm -hmm. To bring this knowledge to people who are searching for these problems mm -hmm. uh, and answers to these problems, right? So yeah, I, I would say like it's kind of a journey how I came um, from the teacher background. Yeah. And eventually being, you know, doing this content marketing thing um, for um, Respond.io. Yeah. So yeah. what a journey. And so, you know, you've, over the last few years, you've been getting a lot of insights into from these different industries. Mm -hmm. um, what, what do you think is really important then when you're, you're creating this educational content from a B2B point of view, like um, what are the most important components for you? Well, for one, for, for one, B2B is, the sales process for B2B is <coughs> much longer. Mm -hmm. It's much, much longer. Unlike B2C, you just go on social media, slap a little bit of some nice copywriting, <laughs> make sure the product is the right, fluff. you're the fluff, it's targeted, the picture's nice, the video is good, and chances are people, might actually start buying and the condition is just right there and then they put in their credit card, the deal's done. Yeah. But for B2B, it's, it's really different because for us, we're selling a solution and it's not just a simple solution. It's something that requires people to have understanding at different stages of the customer's funnel, mm -hmm. right? So how we do content and to make sure that this content would actually work is we really have to understand who we're talking to and what they're looking for. What is their search intent? So those are the things that uh, we have to really consider. So number one is um, going back to your question, which is the most important component. The most important component <laughs> is to really understand who your customers are, because mm. then you can only create the content that is meant for them at that stage when they're ready. If someone is, for example, if they're not ready to accept a message that is meant for conversion, if they have no basic understanding of that particular product at the time when you're giving them this message, chances are they will not convert even though it's a great piece, it's a, it's a great copy, mm -hmm. the content's right, but if they're not the right audience, then there's no point in giving them this content. Then you have to understand, like, if, is, is this customer or is this potential customer ready to receive this content? Mm -hmm. So we do have different kind of content at different stages of the customer funnel. Yeah, yeah. so you got the like, top, mid, bottom yes. of funnel. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I like what you said about understanding that search intent. What do you look for when you're trying to understand it so you can start to create a strategy around content? So what kind of content are you creating for a top and all the way down to the bottom and how then do you ensure that the audience is finding it? 
So first of all, we do have our keyword research. That's the most basic or fundamental thing that we do mm -hmm. whenever we plan content, we do our keyword researches. Mm -hmm. Anything that is related to our business, anything that's related to our industry and what our competitors are ranking for. Mm -hmm. So we check these keywords and then we check like, what are all these competitors writing, are writing about or what are all these ranking articles on Google? What are they writing about? And that would kind of inform me. Um, okay, if this article is, for example, how to create WhatsApp group. So, um, obviously, the title itself is clear, like how to create WhatsApp group, but sometimes it's not as clear as that. Sometimes the, 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 the keyword that you want to rank for is as simple, it's as broad as WhatsApp group. Yeah. And then you might have 10 different results. A million and, pages. A million pages <laughs> of WhatsApp group results. And they're, they're not all about how to create WhatsApp groups. Some might just be oh, these are all the different WhatsApp groups you can join, these are the top 10 best WhatsApp groups, or this is what, what, what a WhatsApp group is. So by checking all these different um, ranking contents, especially those on the first page, would tell you that you know, Google is ranking these pages for a reason, because this is what people are searching mm -hmm. for, and this is why they're ranking these pages. So by understanding what people are searching for, it tells you exactly what you should be putting this content rather than just stuffing keywords in there. It's like, oh, just mm. what's a group here, what's a group there, what's a group just, you know, yeah. everywhere. Yeah. And it's the fundamental here really is, you know, for anyone who's kind of getting started in their content mm -hmm. journey, yeah. it's, it's that upfront research. It's that upfront research as well yeah. as understanding your customers. So the content team, you're not a standalone team, you don't work on your own you have to work very closely with the customer team as well as the product team because these people, they do extensive research on who the competitors are, who the customers are, especially the customer team because they talk to the customers daily. Mm -hmm. They do give us insights as well as to what the customers are looking for. And I know there are people out there who go on social media sites or Reddit, um, Reddit sub forums mm -hmm. or they go on um, Facebook groups to check um, the competitors groups and see like, oh, what are their customers asking for? Or, like, mm -hmm. And you can you do get insights from there, but what's the most valuable the most valuable kind of insights is actually from your own customers because they're using your product and they're telling you exactly what kind of problems they're looking for, and you can do an analysis or you can even do like um, an audit. Have you met those customers' needs with your content? Mm -hmm. If you have anything planned for them, and you look at a product roadmap, and you can even check, like, okay, these are all the products that we're going to release next year. Do we have any content that is catered for this? Mm -hmm. So there are multiple ways that you know we can do our content planning. So keyword research is really like the, one of the most fun, fundamental ways that we can mm -hmm. do it. Yeah. So I guess that's a big part of your role, like working with the different stakeholders, yeah. making sure that there's good customer feedback loops happening. Yeah. So it's not just as simple as get a content creator, right? Mm -hmm. You've got to, to know your customer yeah. where you need that feedback loop. You need yeah. to do the auditing and really understand yeah. that, you know, what are the main features and use cases and problems you're solving. Yeah. And then you can start to work on the keyword research and looking at your competitors and then speaking to your Correct. colleagues it's, again. Yeah, it's not a, it's not the one, yeah. it's not like, you know, this, you do this, 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 and this, and, mm -hmm. and it's not a linear process. Yeah. It's a lot of back and forth with different teams, making sure that we're all aligned on what, what we want to say, how we want to say, and this really meets the needs of our customers. Mm -hmm. So we've kind of talked about the start of the process, mm -hmm. right? We've done our research, mm -hmm. we've got our keyword search, we've yeah. communicated with our stakeholders, we yeah. know what our customers and our competitors are doing. Yeah. What's the end part of the process that you're going through now with content creation? How do you get to the final piece of actually delivering? Delivering it, yeah. right, so the research piece. So we've done the keyword research, uh -huh. and then we kind of have an idea of what we want to say, which is the content research part, mm -hmm. right? And the content research part, sometimes it, it is the most difficult part because as the content team, we don't work directly with the customers mm -hmm. and we don't work on the product as much. For us, um, because we're a messaging platform, we don't work on our platform as much. Mm -hmm. So we have to bridge the knowledge gap of, of our writers, um, of trying to understand the business problems or what the customers are facing. And they also have to somewhat be good at using the platform, which is a challenge itself. But once you get that done, now the next part is, okay, what do I want to write? You don't want to write anything that's too generic, right? Your competitors, they've written five articles on the same problems. Why are we repeating the same thing? Mm. For example, if I were to write an article about how to use WhatsApp group, if you go online, you can find a lot of articles doing the same thing. But how do we differentiate ourselves is we test out every features for ourselves and we try to find a 
if, if there is something that our competitors have not mentioned. Mm -hmm. So one way we do things differently in Espon is we really check everything ourselves. And by doing this, um, we actually kind we actually have been referenced um, as like the primary source of um, reference. Wow. Basically. Yeah. So yeah. you can actually find us on Wikipedia. We have three. You're on Wikipedia. Yeah, we're on Wikipedia. We have wow. three different articles on Wikipedia. Um, I think it's why the Telegram and Line, which is one like those free messaging apps. If you search about all these messaging apps, you can actually find us on Wikipedia because we do a lot of the testings ourselves. Um, especially for Line because Line is um, it's a messaging app that is really popular in all the other regional yeah. um, countries like Thailand, Thailand yeah. Taiwan. We don't really find a lot of results in English, mm -hmm. which is why we're one of the first English companies to actually go into the app, test out every feature, and we write about all these features. Which is why I think, yeah. <laughs> yeah. so it's hard to find this information in English. So this is kind of direction that we can. So that that end yeah. part actually. Is, is really interesting is actually getting the content team mm -hmm. to use the product yes and use or getting way more in depth into what you're going to be talking about like yeah. actually using line for example to yeah. be able to write something yeah. that's actually going to be useful rather than yeah. just free reasons to use line right yeah um okay yeah so that's a like from so there's a lot of research a lot of background that's happening yeah and there's a lot of usage that's a huge amount of time before we even started writing right that is not scalable and that was a problem that we used to have because we take so long to create one piece of content and for us is we want we want to be a content powerhouse we don't just want to create one piece of content per month that's too slow we don't get yeah. a lot of traffic from that so what we do is um, but that's just one of the very few blogs that we actually have to work really long and, um, on, on one piece of content. Mm -hmm. But we do have other content which is much scalable. So what we do is we basically have a template ready. So mm -hmm. this template, it has all the different questions that people, like the writers should ask themselves when they write this. Um, I can't really think of one example right now. <laughs> but, but how the template works is basically um, it tells you that, okay, for the header, have you answered these five following questions? If you have, it means that, okay, for this paragraph, you have, you've, you've had, had enough information. Mm -hmm. And then you can move on to the next one. And then here we've got another five questions, which is in the template, and it asks you, like, oh, have you covered this? Have you covered this and covered this? Have you thought about this? Mm -hmm. So by having this template, we don't actually have to spend a lot of time checking the structure, because the structure checking is when it takes a lot of back and forth between the editor and the writers because yeah. the editor would have to then go in and fact check them and have to ask them like why do you say this why are you not saying that mm -hmm. this piece of information is missing so by having a template it actually fills the gap mm -hmm. um, that, the, that the writers might have so i work very closely with the editor to come up with this set of questions um, just based on all the very successful blogs that we have we kind of reverse engineer whatever content we have into a structure or mm. a list of questions and then the writers can use that and then they can replicate and scale it. Wow. Yeah. That's uh that's an incredibly thoughtful process because what I was thinking you were going yeah. to say yeah. and you didn't, yeah. which I'm really glad you did it. Yeah. Um was the so what we do for example, mm -hmm. take this podcast. Yeah. It's gonna be, you know, maybe half an hour, forty minutes long, mm -hmm. where they're gonna have one piece of content mm -hmm. and then we're gonna cut that it down to maybe six right. other pieces of content, like okay. snippets. Okay. And then we could potentially write a blog about something we learn okay. in this. So one piece of content can become like six, seven or eight, right. you know, pieces, pieces of, of content. content. Um, whereas you guys have got these very structured templates that yeah. creates a control factor as well. Mm -hmm. um, that means you can, well, you can scale quicker because you're not having to go back and forth, checking, checking, checking. Yeah. I think we still do a lot of back and forth in checking, checking, checking. We so, were at that stage. We, yeah. were, we were at that stage. And we just really had to churn out content. On average, I think in Q3, which is um, last term, yeah. we actually did about 30, 40 blogs within Wow. That three months, yeah. So that's more than ten blogs a month. Yeah, if you have four writers. Well, well that well, that uh, might explain. Okay, that might explain. <laughs> yeah, that might explain. You're also leading a team of creative people. Yeah. Um, creativity can create conflicts. You know, you're a leader of a really, uh, I imagine, quite a diverse team. How, as a leader, how are you then handling those conflicts to keep everybody on the same message going for those your aggressive thirty to forty blogs <laughs> in a quarter? It's pretty interesting when I when I first saw this question, I was like, oh, conflict, do, I, do we have a lot of conflict? Mm -hmm. 
we don't actually have like like major food going out like oh I don't know if this I don't agree with you yeah, yeah. We, we, we don't have such thing but we do have place where we actually disagree with people and I think that's normal right healthy. Every, it's healthy like mm. it's it's weird if you have no opinions at all and everything is like yes you know? yeah um, we do practice open communication. I think it's something that's really important is to actually acknowledge whatever that person is saying, even if you mm. don't agree with it. Mm. Because for me, most disagreements come from being dismissed. Like mm. that, that feeling of being um, discontented comes from being dismissed, that you feel like you're not being heard. It's mm. not about being right, but I just need you to heal where I'm coming from, mm. what I'm thinking. And we do practice this open communication thing like all right tell me what you think okay now you can just say now it's my turn to tell you why i think differently mm -hmm. but at the end of the day it's really not about who is right mm -hmm. but what the right decision is and what's best for the company what's the best outcome that's what mm -hmm. we're looking and i always tell it tell everyone that this is nothing personal yeah don't walk, don't walk out of this room and don't say hi to me the next time i come to like, you know for a coffee or something like it's nothing personal and like, that's yeah. how we practice like even with me and and even with uh, like the people that I work with above me as well, mm -hmm. like we do have a lot of disagreements, and and, and it's like healthy disagreements. I say like this is not how things are supposed to be done, mm -hmm. or you can tell me like this is why you're wrong. And mm -hmm. I'm like okay, tell me why. And he's like, duh, 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 duh. I'm like okay, okay, that makes sense. So yeah, just talk it out. Like for yeah. me, it's all about communication. Absolutely. I mean, for internally, we we kind of are trying to improve here mm -hmm. always um, yeah. as a. Uh, a growing young business, new people coming in, different ways of working. Um, so we look at things like the five dysfunctions of a team. So mm -hmm. like if you have the absence of trust, then you have fear of conflict. Yeah. If you have a fear of conflict, then you start to, to lose um, commitment mm -hmm. on you know, certain activities. If you're losing commitment, you're losing accountability, and then mm -hmm. there's inattention to results. So we look at that first pillar at mm -hmm. the beginning, that like, there needs to be trust. Mm -hmm. Um, and the trust goes both ways. Um, yeah. Let's say subordinate isn't trusting you, mm -hmm. then they're not going to have conflict with you when they disagree. Oh, or yeah. they're not going to tell you when there's a problem mm -hmm. because they're afraid of the conflict yes. because they don't trust how you react. So it's really, really important to like, establish those pillars. Yeah. Um, it's kind of like a pyramid, actually. So it's not really a pillar. A block. <laughs> um, but you but, did say something about trust, which I find really interesting. Is sometimes people do not tell us directly mm -hmm. of how they feel about mm -hmm. certain things, but they might channel it other ways. Mm -hmm. Like for us, we do have like a monthly one-on-one -on -one mm -hmm. at the end of the month where we send a questionnaire out to employees, and they can actually fill out the questionnaire and say like, "Oh, how do you feel about working here? What do you think that this company can improve? How do you think you did so far this month?" And like you said, they might not say it to you immediately when you felt it. But at the end of the month, it's always there. Ah, like, yeah. oh, this thing happened. I'm like, oh, this happened like... Three weeks ago. Three weeks that? ago. <laughs> and now you're bringing it up. Like, yeah. okay, but at least it's an avenue for people to actually voice mm -hmm. how they feel rather than just, you know, do an annual year, like, yeah, yeah. end quality of year checking, quality yeah. review. That's too late by then. So. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, it's something that we should consider as well, having some kind of those internal, and even potentially, um, what's the word? Uh, anonymous. Anonymous, yes. Yeah, maybe yeah. like also anonymous. I think we used to have a little anonymous feedback, and okay. sometimes I'd find out things that mm -hmm. I was definitely not aware of, mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and, and that helps as well. Yeah. Um, so, going back to content, coming away from people. Sure. Uh, uh, we were talking about a lot of different ways to create content mm -hmm. um, and there's a lot of structure here yeah. and sometimes structure can be great but it can also lack personalization so mm -hmm. how important is personalization do you think in content writing um, you know maintaining your your brand's uh, identity messages values how do we keep the personalization in the content so we are open to how writers want to write because I believe every writer, every writer, they have their own personality, they yeah. have their way of writing, which is we're, we're pretty fine with the how they want to write as long as they adhere to the messaging guidelines. And for us, we do have like a messaging golden rules. Mm -hmm. So we have a full documentation of basically everything we should adhere to um, in terms of the response guidelines, mm -hmm. um, publishing guidelines. So as long as you keep to that how you phrase your sentence, how you want to write, your tone of voice, as long as it meets our guidelines, mm -hmm. 
we have been flexible mm. but yeah how, how how long um have you been leading your content team i have been in the sport for two and a half years uh, but i only started building this team from 2021 mm. the start of 2021 Probably about two years. You've got an amazing structure for two such years. a short period of time. Two years. We're looking for skills. So uh, we, yeah, we you have, need it. We have to have structure. This is, it's just getting harder and harder to have one person just managing like 10 people on it. Mm. So, which is why we have this, everything is documented. Mm. We have a lot of documentation internally, just so that any new writers that comes on board, any new content creator that comes on board, they have everything they need to know mm -hmm. all written down for them so that it's skilled it doesn't matter if two comes in three comes in here's the documentation yeah, yeah. read it yeah read, read 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 and you're a writer you you're expected to read so. of course yeah so, <laughs> yes. yeah hiring like maybe a sales guy to come in and read they're not gonna read oh no <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's really good so like yeah. golden rules yeah um so i think some of my biggest lessons is mm -hmm. you know upfront research mm -hmm. right really put the effort in to mm -hmm. make sure you've got those communication loops with multiple yeah. departments stakeholders so that you're creating a content strategy that's really going to impact the you know the buyer's journey that mm -hmm. audience top mid funnel yeah. um, making sure your content team are actually using what they're talking about and actually yeah. feeling and touching what they need to talk about yes. and that way it's as well it's like all more authentic Right, the writing so when someone reads it they're getting actual yeah. intelligence which got you on wikipedia um and of course then you're creating those structures in place so that you can scale it's you're sounding more and more like a publishing house you know you've got an editor um templates that every sort of article goes through all the golden rules we do have an internal joke i'm not sure if my bosses will like this but we call ourselves a content factory the content, content factory. factory yes i like that yeah like we're that. a content factory yeah well that's yeah. i guess um any company that's driving an inbound strategy to to generate real sales needs to be a content factory whether it's written content yeah. or video content our site <clears throat> excuse me is very much more video mm -hmm. um we need to do more written mm -hmm. content. I think we can get a lot of lessons just from our session with you today. Um, so thinking about now conversions, yeah. right, and quality of the content, right. um, kind of what are, do you have examples of good quality content that is driven to like really good successful conversions, yes. maybe like direct pulling factors? Yes, we do have, uh, so we do have different content categories, right? Mm -hmm. um, one of it is what we call the pillar content. Mm -hmm. So the pillar content is what got us on Wikipedia. Mm -hmm. Those content that covers everything, very very insightful, has a lot of um, in, um, information that you will not get elsewhere. So that is what would get us all those backlinks, all these references, mm -hmm. getting cited and things like that. Um, but they are not necessarily the tools for conversion because no. It's an ultimate guide. It's it's meant for awareness. It's meant it's meant to be informational. It's not really um, a transactional piece of content that, that gets people want to convert or you know swipe their credit cards. Yeah. But we do have content that we actually found this content back in twenty twenty one or even end of twenty twenty. It was a long time ago, and at that time, this particular keyword, um, where we do our keyword research, it it barely has any volume. Mm. But it speaks to our customers because uh, if you guys use WhatsApp, you guys would know that you can't use WhatsApp on multiple devices, mm -hmm. right? If you, back then, if you have one phone and you open it on your desktop, mm -hmm. and that's it. If you're a company and you're a small company, this is a problem mm -hmm. because only two person can use WhatsApp at the same time. Mm -hmm. And what we found was okay, this is a problem, it's related to our industry, so we're gonna write an article about this. Mm -hmm. So we wrote an article about this. So in our article, obviously we address the problem, which mm -hmm. is you can only use WhatsApp on two devices. But as Respond I know, we provide you the solution to use WhatsApp on multiple devices, mm -hmm. which is something that we do because it's an API, we connect it to a software and that's how you can actually scale um, how many people use WhatsApp. Mm -hmm. And that really took off. It really took off. Most of our customers come from that one blog. Wow. And until today, 2022, two years down the road, it's still one of our best performing blogs wow. in terms of um, generating revenue mm. and also signups. 
So we're maintaining that blog now. Um, if you search WhatsApp Mrs. Mokley users online, you'll find us in a top three position depending on which country that you're searching from. Mm -hmm. So one, so you will have content that you will find that you know it's going to be your golden goose, mm. basically, and you want to keep that. So for us, is we've assigned one writer to just really look after this blog, treat it like your baby, mm -hmm. update mm -hmm. it often. You know, if you need more content, put it in. Look at what the competitors are doing. So every week she does this weekly check in for me, and she said that oh this blog is starting to rank really high. You should mm -hmm. do something about it. I'm like okay good, keep an eye on this other blog and then see how we can get the first position back again mm. if we ever do lose the first position. So yes, we do have blogs like that. Blogs that are very targeted to the customer's problem and blogs that um, that you know that you solve these problems as well. Yeah. 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 Okay. So if we're looking for quality content, it's yeah. it's about firstly maybe also looking at the keywords for somewhere where there's a lower volume where you have a higher chance of ranking. Yes. And then being very targeted to a problem that you specifically solve yeah. and the people who are searching that are obviously looking for a right. solution they find so they have that higher buying intent yes. and they find you and then maintaining yeah. it yeah and what's interesting was now in 2022 two years afterwards i think when we started the global volume was 150 mm. on the hrefs today that if you check it it's 10 times more wow it's about 1.8k globally and you're up there on the top we're in the top three position we've been ranking first for a long long time and all the competitors starting go up, going after the same keywords especially competitors in the same space mm -hmm. our very close competitors after we published the blog we realized that all these other competitors are starting to copy yeah. whatever that we have and it's sometimes the structure is exactly like 90 percent the same they just mm -hmm. go for the same way of writing things so it is a real problem that whoever that is in the same space as us, they are also experiencing the same problem with their customers. And they are also offering the same solution, which is why they're all going after the same keyword. And now they're, they're copying yeah. you, and imitation is the best form of flattery, right? <laughs> 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 yeah, it's, yeah it's, it's, that's a lot of work. So you're, that's why you have one dedicated writer on this golden goose, goose. conversion blog, yeah. never let go of that top oh, three. Yes. We, we, do, yeah. we don't just have one blog, so we have like eight blogs this quarter and we just assign them to different writers, just mm. take care of all these money generating blogs. Mm. Yeah. So it's kind of like, if you're getting started, get one blog that's working, yeah. look at those keywords, find the key right. problem, get one working, keep it, add another, add yeah. another and keep going till you've got, I like you guys, eight blogs that are just driving you conversion. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's a really good um, insight actually. Okay. Yeah. So, Let's think about, I'm, I'm going to kind of skip to towards the end and go back oh, a little sure. bit, but um, someone who's just getting started, yes. right? And um, I'm fortunate, I made a decision at the beginning to mm -hmm. kind of start with marketing. Mm -hmm. So I, I have, uh, you know, we've got good conversion, yeah. but we're learning as well yeah. to be better at investing in content yeah. marketing. What kind of tips and advice do you have of where someone could start to invest in this? Start now. Just start now. You know, the thing is, the earlier you start, the better, because the longer you wait, the, the further ahead your competitors will be mm -hmm. in terms of their content. And for content to rank, it takes about six months mm -hmm. to one year to really see the results. So the longer you wait, the longer you see the results in the long run. Yeah. But the good thing is, unlike paid marketing, paid marketing, you do see the results immediately. Mm -hmm. But that also means that if you stop paying, you stop seeing the results. Yeah. But for content marketing, it's different. You don't put in a lot of money at first. But when your content is published, it's there forever. Yeah. And it keeps turning on turning money for you guys. And the more the better the blog performs in the long run, it just it snowballs. It's like it's a compounding effect. You know, you, you don't just get the same number of traffic every year. But yeah. as the blog improves, more people go to your website. When more people go to your website, your domain ranking increases. When your domain ranking increases, more people come to your website. It's a compounding effect. Yeah. So look at it as a long term investment. So the best time to start, I would say, is to start now. Yeah, just get yeah. started right get away. Started. And I think um, sometimes a lot of entrepreneurs or, or business owners, depending on where they are in the stage of their business, mm -hmm. it can be quite scary to do something that doesn't bring results. Like paid mm -hmm. marketing, as you said, you know, mm -hmm. it gives immediate results. Mm -hmm. But of course, obviously, you it turn off the tap, it's done. Yes. Um, and so sometimes it's like balancing out, okay, well, what's important for the business? Mm -hmm. um, and I think having that clear strategy, okay, maybe we have to spend here where we're not going to get immediate results mm -hmm. we have to invest correct and come up with the right content strategy yeah. at this like starting now sounds easy but to come up with the right strategy and then you start 
-hmm. that's that's the key yeah so it, it's work it's not yeah. easy you've yeah. got to, like you were saying right at the beginning you've got to understand what the search intent is yeah. what are the kind of key words where are your competitors what are they doing where's mm -hmm. the customers uh, what do the customers lay with your product yeah having your writers then also actually use the product so yeah. there's a lot of sort of upfront mm -hmm. teamwork that mm -hmm. requires a lot of time but oh then goodness. invest the time now as well as the money because yeah. obviously your you resources need to hire people. you need you need to hire yeah. don't do it yourself if you don't know what you're doing yeah um and and start to build today because your customers are getting ahead of you your competitors are competitors, getting, sorry, getting yeah. ahead of you exactly yes, maybe your customers are too <laughs> yeah okay and you said um the, i've got a quote here the more complicated the industry you're in, the greater the customer's need for high quality resources. Oh, Explain. Yes. Oh yes. If something is really, really difficult and you don't have high quality content to actually educate these people, mm. they will not be able to use your product. Yeah. Right? So for us, um, I think I said this very specifically to the industry that I'm in. Not every industry would um, have the same um, problem. Mm industry maybe it's very straightforward mm -hmm. people walk onto your website you click a few buttons it works that's fine but for us that's they have a lot of hoops to jump through mm -hmm. and for them to jump through those hoops they need this content to support them. they need to understand what they know and even understand what they don't know mm -hmm. for them to make this work um, so for example if you want, do you guys know that whatsapp has two different products one is obviously the whatsapp business app which you can download from mm -hmm. the play store or apple store mm -hmm. and then we also have another product called whatsapp business api mm -hmm. so whatsapp business api is really complicated if you want to set things up <laughs> you have to actually go through a third party mm -hmm. to set things up you have to pay this third party mm -hmm. so just based on this alone you could tell how complicated it is because then every single third party they have their own pricing mm -hmm. model and you would have to understand which ones to pick. So just based on what I'm telling you right now, you could tell that I can write a lot of content based on this. Yeah. Because I can explain all these different things. I can tell you what to do, what to look out for. Mm -hmm. And this is one of um, one of the ways that we actually get our customers is because we address all these different issues that other people are not addressing. You make complexity more simple. Yes. Mm. Because you don't want to find out things yourself. You don't want to do this pricing comparison yourself among yeah. all these ten vendor issues. evaluation no, and then talking do, to the vendors. We and do all these things. Yeah. We we email these people. We try to get our sales team to try to get the information, this pricing from the other companies. We do all sorts of things just to get all this hidden information, and then we present it to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very good. Yeah. I think um I've been speaking to a few people who are in like these very co complex industries mm -hmm. around. Um, like consultancy based um, mm -hmm. the, the last uh, podcast we did was with um, uh, the CEO of Human Inc mm -hmm. um, and they do you know mindset change mm -hmm. and things like that and it's so complex to yeah. explain because it's yeah. it's such a grey area mm -hmm. and so it's like getting all the information and sort of breaking it down mm -hmm. into much more so would it be bite sizable as well so that when you're creating this like simplifying complexity are you delivering it in a quick and easy way to read or is this quite long form because it is something i'm a sure i had a short attention span yeah, that's right? right and most people do these days right? right so we do write long articles but it's really more mostly for ranking mm -hmm. right because uh, we just want to make sure that the, the 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 content that we are publishing is of high quality as all the resources have mm -hmm. all the information but we also want to make it accessible mm -hmm. right we know that not everybody likes to read two thousand words three thousand words so what we have what we aim what we aim to do is to write it in very simple sentences hopefully that would help people digest it a little bit more easily and we also do have this rule it sounds weird but it works for us right okay. is we have this three line per paragraph rule so if you look at all our blogs we have three lines for every single paragraph mm. just so it helps to keep our writers in check so that they don't go on a verbal diarrhea, you know, like Brevity. you right? Yeah. So you just keep things concise. Uh -huh. This paragraph, all you have is, is three lines. Say what you need, but make it three lines. So that really helps them to be concise. That really helps them to think, yeah. what is the best way I can say this in as few words possible? Yeah. So it's an extremely grueling exercise. They, uh, we're all they like, hate it. They hate it. They're <laughs> like, all not used to it. But they're very good at it now. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, that's something that we do. It sounds crazy, but it works. Honestly, I, I don't think it sounds crazy. I think yeah. it's hard to implement, mm -hmm. but 
Um, I'm always talking about brevity, mm -hmm. always. And um, again, attention span, I haven't got time to digest a, a, yeah. a story, mm -hmm. an entire like novel mm -hmm. of, you know, for one thing. That's why I always look for like a TLDR mm -hmm. as much as possible. And yeah. I think those three line per paragraph is, that's a really good rule. That's really good. It's I'm not from me. That. I have to credit this to my boss. He was okay. the one who came up with this. Okay, yeah. well, yeah. Uh, we're going to steal that idea. <laughs> oh wow well thank you so much um for your time serena i really oh, enjoyed i've, oh, I've like read so much i'm gonna steal a lot of this and um <laughs> we'll like try and implement it ourselves as well in some areas and i think there's a, a lot of people who are thinking about how that they can drive their business now mm -hmm. um and what where they should be looking at to invest and i mm -hmm. think the the answer is mm -hmm now mm -hmm. and content and the right content mm -hmm. that can drive results fantastic thank you so much no problem you're welcome thank you for having me